everybody, and happy Saturday to you. You're looking at Sweet Lucy Ray. I don't know if you can tell it's a little bit of a different background. Oh, do I have a story to share with y'all. So get yourself a cup of tea or a coffee or a meal or something. If you're driving in your car, be safe. Just listen. Um, anyway, I have a couple things to do in this video, one of which is uh, Lucy Ray got some happy mail from her mommy, so I'm going to open that and probably change her into something that's in here. So I am going to turn her in a minute so she's facing me, so you'll have a profile for a little bit, then I'll turn her back to face y'all so you can see her sweet her sweet little face. Um, but before I start with that, I first want to thank everybody for your lovely, lovely, kind comments on my last video where I talked about the future of Kimberly's Cocoon. And I also want to share a few more things that I forgot to say in that video. Um, and some of those things are, and I'll probably forget other ones, but Gail left a lovely comment talking about how her hands, how she's had uh, things done to her hands, um, due to arthritis and cysts and stuff like that. And she told me not to reply, not to type back to her. And that is the reason I had to embrace the love button. Um, I didn't go into detail back then because I had not seen my doctor yet and I didn't want to, you know, start talking about maybe it's this, maybe it's that. Because I was thinking it might be one of those nodes you get from arthritis and those there's nothing, you, you can't, they're, they're just there. And so I, you might be able to get them surgically removed. I'm not 100% sure, but, um, and my, I'll be honest, my thumb at the time, I, I can bend it really pretty good now. Once I get there, it starts hurting. Um, but compared to my other thumb, I can't bend it as much. But I got to the point where I could, like, I don't even know if that's in camera, barely do that. So I didn't want to diagnose myself or anything and until I had all the information I didn't want to share with you but I will be honest typing was and still is a bit painful but comparatively speaking to a few weeks ago anybody who corresponds with me via email saw a drastic reduction in response time and also very little correspondence because and I will admit typing still is a bit painful for me so it is something that has had to change in my life and I'm still adapting to it. I want to continue reborning. It is something that brings me great joy. Um, so I have to find balance with everything. And so much of what we do in our life is with our hands. It's not just my craft. I mean, everything from eating to cleaning to dressing yourself, you use your hands for. And our thumbs are really important. And so I have to safeguard them. And so... Thank you for understanding that I'm not, I'm just hitting the love button to most comments unless you left a question. There were a couple people I replied to and I also want to take a moment to welcome all my new subscribers and new commenters. That's something I really love to do is welcome each person in the comments to my channel. But it is something right now I physically have to be mindful of how much time I'm keyboarding keyboarding on my computer. So thank you so, so very much for your understanding. And it is also why I'm leaving very few comments. I'll be honest, and you'll understand why in a couple of minutes. I have not watched very many videos. I, I In the last probably six weeks, I've maybe seen 10 to 15 videos max. Um, and I'll explain all that in a minute. But um, I have watched a few, and one of them I'm actually going to leave a link down below. Suzanne in Australia made an absolutely amazing video earlier this week, and not to give it all away, but she basically gives this amazing analogy to the understanding of being part of a community. And I could not have said it better myself. It is perfectly on point with how I see this community and I really, really encourage anybody who has not seen it to please head over to her channel and watch it. And like I said, I will put a link down in the description below. Absolutely brilliant, fabulous video, Suzanne. Round of applause for you. <laughs> anyway, everybody, but like I said, thank you so very much for your kind reception to my my video about my business. Um, I did, I, I think I mentioned in that video that my next video would be Ethan's box packing. I did end up packing him up to go home on Tuesday. I had forgotten that Monday when I corresponded with his mommy that 
Monday was Memorial Day because that was the day I was going to ship him. Um, but I did ship him out on Tuesday. He has made it home. Mommy has a lot going on. Um, but he did make it home safely. So I will, as y'all know, I don't pop post the box packing until either mommy posts her box opening or if she's not somebody who's on YouTube, lets me know she's opened the baby. Um, and in this case, this mommy is on YouTube. So once his box opening is up, I will put his box packing up and also link the box opening as I always do in the description. Um... So anyway, now I'm going to open Lucy Ray's Happy Mail. Here is the package. Isn't that beautiful? I love that. It has this beautiful, um, like, peacock feathers. Well, not really, but they're feathers of some sort, not quite peacock feathers. But anyway, this is from, um, like I said, Lucy Ray's mommy had purchased some things. This is from one of the baby sales that Katie did on Instagram. Hi, Katie. Um, so inside, oh, good. Inside of here we have a pink bag. And then Katie always wraps everything so nicely. So let's see what you got, Lucy Ray. And then we'll decide what we're going to put on you. I get to decide, I guess. Oh, look how sweet. Oh, it's a whole outfit. It is a, let's see, this is a footed sleeper of Peter Rabbit. It says down here, just above the right foot, there is a sewn-on patch. The whole, the whole bodysuit is cream. And then there's a cream patch, and in the cream patch, and a beautiful uh, blue, like a, oh, I just, uh, cornflower blue is Peter Rabbit, and then the patch is embroidered on in the same cream um, thread. But then on the front, it is side snap, so it goes down across under the neck, and on the main part, almost like in pastel colors, are three Peter Rabbits. The top one, he's laying on his tummy. And it says, it's embroidered, let's hop to it. Oh, I guess he's hopping. Nope, he's not laying on his tummy, he's hopping. <laughs> and there's a tree behind him, and that looks like a radish, I think. But maybe it's a carrot, because he's a bunny. But no, they look like radishes to me. And then the next picture, he's upright and walking, and it says, catch me if you can. And he's got a handful of, we'll say they're radishes, okay? And he's dropping a couple. And then the final one, he's standing very proud with a hand on either side, of, you know, on his hips. And it says, a good rabbit never gives up. That's the truth. And then the sleeves, in like a darker tan color, have images of Peter Rabbit. And it does have the um, the rollover for the hands, the protective. And then bo both sleeves are like that. And then the back is plain cream. And then it has a little matching chapeau in cream. And then it has the darker... the the bunnies like on the sleeves. So that's outfit one. What do you think, Lucy Ray? You want Peter Rabbit? Or wait, let's see. What's in here? Oh, this one's Taddy Teddy. I have such a fun. This for Taddy. I love Taddy Teddy. Okay. This one is also a sleeper, footed sleeper, side snap as well. And it says, off to bed, sleepy head. And it has a gray fuzzy Teddy Teddy embroidered on there. He's all curled up sleeping. And under him is a little patch that says Tiny Teddy Teddy. And there's a cloud behind him that's got silver embroidered thread. And then there are stars and moons in gray above him and down both sleeves. Oh, that's so sweet. And the, oh, the hat has ears! It has a matching chapeau and it has the stars all over it in gray. Some are filled in and some are just the outline. And then it has little ears. Oh, I'm loving that one. But wait, wait. Don't decide yet, Lucy. We have one more. Oh, I see something pink. Oh, this might have to be the one. Oh, my word. Look at that face. This is a Bambi set. It has a bib in pink. Oh, I love this. And then it's almost like a charcoal pencil drawing of Bambi. You can't see Bambi's legs, but you can see the face and the body and the tail sticking up. Oh, this is beautiful. And then there's some little flowers in gray and white. Wish, I call them, they're, it's like somebody blew a wish flower and some of the little, you know, the, the puffy dandelion. And then, the oh, I got to put this one on her. This is a footed sleeper. It is white, and it just has Bambis all over it. Some are standing, some are laying, and again, they're like a charcoal pencil drawing. And then there are, let's see, I guess that's like a tulip. And then again, I call them wish flowers, like when you blow the dandelions. That 
like an individual one to me. That's what that looks like. And then there's little pink hearts, and it's all over, front and back. And it has the little rollover sleeve things. Oh, I think we're going to put this one on. What do you think, Lucy Ray? Yep, she agrees. I have my joy bubble here. So now let me explain why we're upstairs today, ladies. Now that I think I'm up to date on everything. So y'all remember, I have talked about um, our weather here in the Midwest. Well, last Tuesday, as I said, I did uh, Luis's box packing video. And I took him... Wait, let me think a minute. I actually packed him up on... Did I pack him Monday? Yes, I ended up packing him on Monday. And how fortuitous was that? Oh, my word. Well, it would have been okay because I would have had him at the post office. But anyway, I packed him up on Monday, and I then I you know, put my table and everything away, as I do. And then Tuesday, I got up. Now, remember, Tuesday is our day off. Mondays and Tuesdays are our, 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 our weekend. Normally, my husband will go in for a few hours on the Monday, and then he's off all day Tuesday. But because it was Memorial Day on Monday, he opted to stay home all day Monday and he was going to go in for a couple hours on Tuesday, which was perfect because I had to head to the post office. And so that's what we did. He went off to work. I got ready to go to the post office. And I did that. But we were expecting, so y'all remember a couple, about a month or about a month, five weeks ago, we got a new mattress. Well, it wasn't that great. And so the company we bought it from has a policy where you can return it for up to a year. And it has different increments, but the first four months you get the full value either as a return or an exchange. And so I had, prior to going, had done some research and narrowed it down to two mattresses that I really was interested in. One of which, when I laid on it, didn't like it at all. The other I loved. Um, but he had recommended a different one to us, which was nice in the store. We really liked it. But... It was and it was half price of the one, you know, the other one that I really liked. So I thought, well, let's get this one. And in the event that we love it, we saved, you know, half the amount of money. But it didn't work out great. So I had gone in there on the Friday before Memorial Day and organized to, you know, get that mattress. Also, when we were there the first time, oh look how sweet you are, Lucy Ray. Um, we had. Most of the beds in this store, most of the mattresses, I should say, are on these electronic frames that, you know, have all these different positions. You can raise the head, the feet, it has massage, and my husband really, really liked it. Um, but we opted to not get it. And so when I went back, I thought, you know what, we don't really do much in terms of big purchases for ourselves. So I went ahead and wanted to surprise my husband. And so I ordered that too. So they were coming on Tuesday and it's so funny because I said to the man, I said, oh, maybe I should take the remote home with me. But my thinking on that was I was afraid the delivery men might forget it. Oh, look how sweet she is. I'm going to have to snap some pics and send her mommy because this video will take a while to upload. I, had to, I have to open a new Kimberly's Cocoon brush. And again, you'll understand why in a minute. This is so rambly. Anyway, so I went... And I said, oh, maybe I should take the remote with me so they don't forget it. He's like, oh, they won't. He goes, there, there are, we have the, 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 the frame is set up, but it's not on its legs. The legs are in the back room in a box. As soon as you leave, I'll go put the, the remote in with the legs. I'm like, oh, okay, fabulous. So I get home. I don't know, 5, 5.30 that evening, and a little after 7, it dawned on me. Y'all remember the story about the, um, I don't know if you've been with me that long, but back when I did the headlights for my husband, we have uh, security cameras all around our house. My husband does that wherever we live, and he has an app on his phone, so he sees anytime there's motion, his phone chimes, and he can look and see what's going on. So, do we want your little bow on? Yes, of course. I wish I had a headband up here. Well, I do, but let me see. Can I access it? Well, I think her bow is fine. Let me just see, though, quickly. Let me turn her so you can see her. And I'm going to see if I think a headband would look sweeter with the jam. Let me see. Let me see if she's in camera good. Yes. All right, I'll keep talking while you look at her. So anyway, um, she... No, not she. 
So I opted to, no, so it was about 7 o'clock that evening, and it dawned on me, oh my word, how can I surprise my husband? He's going to see them carrying all these components in, and then they're going to be in the house way much longer than anticipated, because now they have to set up this whole contraption kind of thing. And that's not how I wanted him to find out about it. I wanted him, you know, to find out about it from me. <laughs> so I called, because they were open till 8. And so I called, and I, as, as soon as the phone was ringing on their end, my husband pulled into the driveway. I'm like, darn. So, I'm just going to put this cute little pink headband with this. i got to order some of those headbands, Mia, that you ordered. Me, I found these great ones on Amazon that you don't have to tie the back because the band part is like nylon, like pantyhose nylon. Oh, look at you, Lucy Ray. Oh, my word, she's so adorable. Let's give her her little friend. Her necklaces are under there. I, I opted to leave them under the bib because her one does stick to her magnet sometimes. <gasps> oh, this is, I love this outfit. Oh, my word. I think that's George. I'm going to have to look. I love that. I'm not normally a Bambi person, but I think it's because it's a charcoal drawing. Anyway, let's put the joy bubble up here, too. I don't know if that's in the screen or not. So let me check. So anyway, um, so of course now I had them on the phone, and I just asked if I could come pick it up on um, on Saturday, because that was Friday. And he's like, oh, absolutely. And I told him why. He thought it was so funny. When I went there, of course, I couldn't stay on the phone very long. My husband was home. So anyway, um, so I went and I got that Friday, Saturday, and I wrapped it up and put it in a bag, and I wrote out a card to my husband and had that all ready. So Tuesday, and then it dawns on me on Monday, my husband's off all day Tuesday. So I didn't need the remote. But it's okay. So I gave it to him Tuesday, and he was so happy and so surprised. So anyway, the, the delivery was coming between 11.30 and 1.30. And, of course, I get the message that they're on their way, and literally a couple minutes later it starts raining. I'm like, oh, great. But luckily, you know, stuff was wrapped in plastic. They brought plastic to take out the old mattress, and everything went well. Uh, we love the new bed. It's fabulous. So, of course, we've only been sleeping on the mattress for a few nights, but so far it's very, very comfortable. Um, so anyway, so during all of this, because what happened was my husband and I, because I had to go out Tuesday morning, he didn't go to work, I went to the post office and did a couple things and then came home and he and I moved out everything from the bedroom, the mattress, I, t I did save our old box springs because I have two, they're, they're actually shallow box springs because our, mat our old mattress was really, really thick. And so I stacked the two of them in the guest room and we took the frame out and then that way I dusted and vacuumed. It was all ready for the, the, the bed to be delivered. And in doing so, I took my phone charger out of the bedroom. For those of you who know me, it's a very rare occurrence for me to misplace things. It happens a couple times a year, max. Um, I'm somebody who puts everything in its place. I know where everything is. I mean, down to the where I can say to my husband, it's on the third shelf, fourth item back in the pantry. I mean, I'm that specific. I know where every minute thing is in my house. And so I had unplugged the charger because it plugs in on my side of the bed, and I thought, well, I don't just want a random charger laying there, because, you know, you just never know. And so I brought it into the kitchen, and I plugged my phone, and I was going about doing my various things. I took my phone off the charger. I was using it, and then went to plug it back in, and my charger was gone. So we had company at lunch, so I said to my husband, did you see, and his friend was here, and I'm like, did y'all see my charger? And they're like, no, well, my husband's a jokester. He likes to hide things from time to time from me. And so I didn't think of that right away, but I thought, hmm, that's weird. So I went and I looked in the couple, plate, the room, couple, I mean, we have a tiny house. The couple rooms I had been in where I used my phone, thinking maybe I took my charger with me, but nope. So then it, at this point, him and his friend decided to go out and have a tea, so they went out for tea, and I thought, you know what, I bet he hid it. So I looked in the couple drawers under that kitchen counter, because normally, like, 
let's say we're on the couch and my phone is, let's, I'll use my phone as an example because that's what I'm talking about. If my phone's on the arm of the couch and I get up and go do things, I'll come back, my phone will be gone. And generally it's like shoved down in the couch cushion. He thinks it's so hysterical. We have a good laugh about it. Um, so anyway, so I looked in the few drawers that were, you know, right by the, uh, under that counter and no, so I thought, you know, what? when he gets home, I'm just going to say, hey, where's my charger? You know, we'll get a good laugh out of it. Let me make sure you're seeing Lucy Ray good. Oh, the joy bubble is right there. Um, so he comes home and I, at that point I'd forgotten about it. So I'm going about doing my stuff. And while he was gone, I made up the bed. I brought up the air mattress and set that up on top of the box springs. I made that whole bed. It looks beautiful. looks like we have a, a bed in our guest room now. And so it was later in the evening when it dawned on me and I said, Hey sweetie, have you seen my charger? He's like, no. And I'm like, no, come on. Where'd you hide my charger? He's like, I didn't hide your charger. And normally he like gets a little smirk on his face, but so he didn't. So I'm like, hmm, that's really weird. So I started looking around again. So I thought, you know what, maybe I don't recall going downstairs at all during the time, you know, where I realized it went missing, but let me go check downstairs. So it was about seven-ish in the evening and I turned on the light that goes down the stairs and I noticed immediately on the carpet at the bottom of the stairs, there's like these two wet looking spots that are not quite the size of a quarter. I'm like, that's weird. Now it did pour shortly before that. It looked like a car wash out of our windows. Like if you're sitting in one of those car wash where the water pours down your windows, that's how our house looked. And we had like thunder that shook the house. And it's been, probably for the last month, 80% of the month that has rained here. So I'm like, that's weird. I'm like, if the ceiling is leaking, it wouldn't leak there because the, the ceiling above that part of the basement is the guest room, which isn't like the roof. So I go down, I'm looking at it, and I start flipping on lights, and there's water coming in. Over by the hot water heater, there was water coming up this pipe, and I'm like, oh, this isn't good. So I come upstairs and tell my husband we have water in the basement. I grab the phone. I call our landlord. And so the, she and her husband came over. They brought their shop vac. My priority, this is not my house. My priority was my business, you know, saving things. The least damage as possible. Of course, their structure is important to me. I don't want the house to fall apart. Um, so I, you know, I got busy it was so amazing that I had set that guest bed up. Currently, every single baby is having a slumber party on that bed. I first saved all my layaway babies. So all you mommies out there that have babies on layaway, which right now who's left is Lucy Ray, Princess Adelaide, and Levi. They were the first babies that I, I rescued. Although all my babies were up, you know, they were in things. It wasn't like they were on the floor. So I, and there was not water in the nursery. So I brought the babies up. I'll be honest, the first night I only brought the layaway babies up. Um, because there was no water in there and there wasn't a lot of water. It was just kind of, it, it's seepage water. It's not sewage water. And so there was water over by, if you, I'll, what I'll do is I'll link at the end of this, the tour of my, nursery and studio so you can get a visual if you're interested in what I'm talking about. So at the bottom of the stairs, directly across from the stairs, is the shelf where I keep all my kits. And there, between the stairs and there, there was water. Like the carpet was wet. And so they shop vac that first, but immediately it would well up with water, like not near the wall, just in this random spot. And so he kept vacuuming it and, and he and his wife were going back and forth about what they should do and I'm rescuing things, I'm lifting things off the floor while they're debating what to do and he ended up saying he was going to go to Lowe's to get some gutter extenders and she said she's only taken water in this house once when she lived here and it was because the old gutter system was not done correctly and she had that redone so she was very baffled by all of this so once he left I said you know I really think we need to move everything over here and lift up the rug because we were th I was thinking it was maybe either a crack in the foundation or so we couldn't it was so random to me that the water was pooling up not in the center of the room but not near the wall and so she's like, oh, good idea. So luckily my kits are on a rolling cart. 
and directly in front of them I have a black, it's a, it's a metal, it's a, I don't, I'm, I'm guessing it's considered vintage. I believe the date inside of it is 1907, so maybe that's an antique. I think antique is 100 years or older. Um, and so we took that over to the tile portion on the other side of my painting table because there was no water over there. And then we rolled the cart of kits away and then we slid my photo shoot area away. And we pulled the carpet up, we shop vacked it, and it's not a crack in the foundation, it's seeping at the where the floor and the wall join. So at least we knew there was no crack in the foundation we saw, and it was all, everything, the whole floor down there, while it looks like it's completely level, it is structured so everything kind of tilts toward the drain under the sink. So that's where the water was going to. So now we had the carpet up, which meant the carpet wasn't absorbing it and it could find its way. So by the time, so I went over there now because we had just randomly moved stuff. So I'm like, well, let me go organize things a little bit better over there. And I had moved, I have a wooden rack that's in front of like the hot water heater where I have clothing items and some blankets that are photo props, all photo prop items that I had moved that back on the tile as well because that was wood and that's there was water coming by the hot water heater. So I went over there to kind of organize things a little bit and I don't know if this shows up in my tour, but back in the corner and along that wall there is a section of the tiled floor that no longer has tile, it's just the concrete. And so as I'm over there, I notice that concrete is wet. And I'm like, oh, we're taking in water back here. And I almost said her name, but, you know, she doesn't want to be on YouTube. So I, I called my landlady back. I said, water's coming back in over here now. And I said, maybe he should get some sandbags or something so that we can direct the water along the tile so that it doesn't start wetting the other side of the carpeting. Because now that we had rolled that other section... The in-between carpet, like in front of my photo props where my paint table was, all that was not getting wet because all that water was headed toward the drain. So the path was fine. And so she's like, no, I don't think sandbags will work. I think if you put sandbags along the wall, then the water's going to go up the wall. I'm like, no, 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 not against the wall. Like if we create a path that, you know, between here, like put a border of the sand so it can stay on the tile because the tile actually curves around back where I have part of my bunker. Like I have like my frid my freezer and my grocery items and, you know, juices and all that stuff. And that goes under the, by the hot water heater. So if the water just flowed back on the tile and went under the drain, we'd be fine. So she did not agree with me. She laid some towels there. They had brought some towels and I had some towels. And I thought, well, once they're wet, it's still going to seep through. But, you know, it's not my house. I can only do so much. And so, anyway, so he comes back and we explain to him what's going on. So he just kept shop vacuuming the two areas, but the water kept coming in. And so he said, well, it's going to be an all-nighter. We're just going to keep shop vacuuming. But she had to go to work the next day. I, I'm not sure if he works from home and I'm not really sure what he does. But anyway, so he took her home. And then he was down, and I was down there, and I was moving stuff around, and finally it was going on 1 o'clock, and I'm like, you know, I need to go to bed. And, of course, this was the first night with our new mattress. <laughs> and, anyway, my husband had gone to bed a couple hours before because, of course, he had to get up for work the next day. And so I, I'm i like, I'm, I'm just going to go to bed. I mean, it's, it's pointless to sit here and shop vac. It just, it's just seeping in. And so, anyway, he ended up finally leaving at 3-something. I found out the next day, and of course by doing that, I went down there and that whole middle portion of the carpet was wet because there was no, you know, channel for the water to go through. So, I started praying, as I do, and I, did she, I think, did she check in with me? There might have been a text. Anyway, I, again, my whole thing was save what I can save. So I started moving stuff around. I let her know water was coming in. She had to go to work that day, but she came over for about a half an hour and helped me move a couple things. Is that the day she brought? So that would have been Wednesday. No, so that she was here for about half an hour. And in the, it was very interesting. In the very center of the nursery, now mind you, the day before, I had moved everything in the nursery once I rescued all the babies. So no, this was what so this now we're Wednesday. So Wednesday I brought all the babies up, all the rest of the babies up, and I migrated everything to the perimeter of that room thinking I can move other things in here because this room's not taking water. 
And I started to notice the middle of the carpet looked moist. I'm like, that's so weird. Now, of course, I was I was wearing my welly boots, and I'm thinking, oh, maybe I should have laid the tarp down. Maybe I'm, you know, walking in water and bringing water in here. So I laid the tarp down. And, again, I left that middle portion open because I was a little suspicious now of the moisture because it wasn't shaped like my boots. It wasn't like the boot print. So... Once I did all that and got everything moved to the perimeter, I lifted the tarp, and sure enough, there's all this water. So I brought the shop vac in and shop vacked it up just to see if it would reappear, and it did. Because it's the carpeting down there is indoor outdoor indoor outdoor carpeting, so there's no padding or anything. So I I vac you know shop vacked it up, and it still came up. So I'm like, okay, I can't use the middle of this room. So I took everything off my paint table, boxed it up, took the table down. Um, my props, of course, are on the rolly cart, but the things that were underneath, like on the floor, those got moved up. Um, I'm trying to think. Anything. I tried to move everything. Anyway, so then I got that whole carpet rolled up, and now I turned it so it's down the center of the room. So now the water had a better path to get to the drain, and you know, it wasn't pooling as much. And so... So that was Wednesday. So Thursday she came by in the morning to check on things. And I showed her now the other room. And I said, you know, I'm very concerned about this carpeting. It's, it's going to start smelling eventually all rolled up and wet. And she wanted to save it. So she said, and at this point I had set one of my tables up because I was using it as like a station of, you know, organizing and stuff. And she said, why don't we set up your other table and unroll the carpet and air it out? I'm like, well, first of all, there's not enough space. We're utilizing a portion of the floor for stuff. We, we would need this entire area fully empty to fully roll out the carpet. She's like, yeah, but at least we can air a section. I'm like, no. Mm -mm. I said, that carpeting is already starting to smell. And it needs to go. And she's like, well, maybe we can put it out the window. And I said, well, that will take three men, and I'm not even a man. So she's like, okay, well, I can bring a man over. So she went home because they were having something done on their house with a contractor. And she went to get him. And then I got a text from her about 40, 45 minutes later stating that she forgot the contractor was off. She needed to go to work. And she was sending over this gentleman to basically cut up the carpet and take it out. That's what he'd like help. One of his, he does, he's like a jack of all trades, but he like goes through during times like this and, you know, removes damaged things. So that was wonderful. I'm like, thank you, Jesus. That's going. So he came in and he cut that up. He took all that out. And then he saw in the other room, he's like, well, what about this carpet? I said, well, I would love to take it out, but it's not my house. I said, and furthermore, I have nowhere to put, because a lot of the stuff in there, y'all know, is wood. And I said, there's nowhere to put that because the concrete was still, there was still water seeping in. There was nowhere to put all this wood. So he said, well, I can cut out the middle wet section if you want. I said, hold on. So I called my landlord, and because she was actually still thinking of trying to save the carpeting in there. And so I called her. She's like, yep, have him cut it out if that's what's best, you know, if you think that's what. So anyway, he cut that portion out. And I shop vac in there um, just because I, I wanted to see was there seepage. But when he, and so, and then I put a, so that day, that Thursday, she had brought over another dehumidifier and a couple fans. And so I shop vac it up. I put a fan on it because I thought, well, if it's, if it's just, you know, in the carpet, once the concrete dries, it'll be fine. And at that point on Thursday, you could actually see the clear paths of seepage. Now that the rug was rolled up, before he even took it out, all the areas in between were dry. And so, of course, once he took the carpet out and I put a fan there, I went out and did a few things. I filled up my car with stuff to donate. I went and donated that. And then I came back home and I had a bunch of some wet boxes that I put out in the garage. So I got those in my car, took those to recycle. And by the time I came home from all that, I think I went, might have gone to the grocery that day in the post office. Anyway, by the time I came home, all the concrete in between the seepage lines in the main room were now dry. However, in the nursery, the concrete was dry but there is a crack in the foundation coming across the room, the short way, not the long way, not from the back where the, the twins hang, not that way, but the, the other way. And so, so there was water in that crack. It's a very small crack, 
um, it goes from one wall to about four inches from the other. I mean, it goes pretty much across almost the whole room. She's not sure if that was there now that we've talked. She's not sure if that was there when she bought the house because it was already carpeted down there and she's never pulled up the carpeting or if this particular, you know, all this water caused it. She doesn't know. Um, but by then with the fan, the crack still had water in it, but then either side of the concrete was wet. You know, the max width was about an inch and then it kind of, you know, like snaked along, whatever. So, but unfortunately, because now that center portion of the carpet was gone, now the other side of the carpet started absorbing the water. So yesterday what I did and I, and, and, um, yesterday was Friday. So Thursday evening, when my husband and I went down there again to look at it, back in the back corner where there had been no water, there now was, and so there were actually some boxes sitting there. Most of my stuff on the floor is plastic or on raised shelves. But we had a couple boxes of things that didn't fit in this house. We moved from a much larger, our, our last house was four times the size of this house. So uh, one of the boxes contained family photos. I just didn't have the wall space. So yesterday what I did was I opened that up. I laid. Luckily, when it was packed, there was a good four inches of paper, moving packing paper at the bottom. So none of the frames got wet. So I went through, I decided I took out all the photos, and I, don't, and I had another car load that went yesterday to the resale. A couple of the boxes were the frames. I just don't have the wall space. We really love tiny house living, so the odds of us moving to a very big house ever are minuscule. So rather than take up that space, I, so I got rid of the frame. So I was using the table again as like a, a station for going through things. And then my goal was to get everything out of the nursery and get that carpet out, which I did. I was a one-woman show superwoman over here, I tell y'all. And so I set up a table and I started, so the, the, the piece that these two boppies lay on are actually a wooden, uh, an old TV stand of my husband's. So I put that out on a table upside down. It had, it was, had a little moisture on it, so I'm hoping it dries fine because it's solid wood. And then the two Moses basket stands had a little bit of water in the curvature. Those are laying on their sides. The little rocking chair that Vijanier sits in and Zipporah lays next to her again on the rockers was a little moisture. I had already lifted things like the high chair, my the little rocking chairs. Those were all lifted up already, so they were fine. Um, and then the thing that may not survive is my white cubicle unit. Um, one of the middle sections, the bottom is the papers peeling, you know, it's just pressed wood. So the wood is a little warped, the papers peeling, the other one is fine. And then now that I've looked at it and then the two side ones, both absorbed water cause they didn't have any white covering. Like the middle ones actually have the white laminate, uh, even on the bottom. But those narrow ones don't on the bottom because they can join, they can stack. And so it's just the, the pressed wood you can see. And so you can see about five inches of absorbed water on the sides and they're a bit warped. So, But I was able to get most of the carpet up. There's an area of the carpet that's actually, bra there's two brackets at the bottom of the closet door. And one of them had a piece of wood wedged between the bracket and the carpet, which was sopping wet and nasty. That got thrown away. But the other bracket, it's actually screwed into the carpet. And I tried the few tools that I have, but again, my hand, I just don't have the strength and with my thumb. So I, what I did was I cut the carpet and I rolled it all up. It's out in the main area. And then I lifted that other carpet and the door is, is it has like the slats, the door, like a shutter slats. So I took the corner of where the, I cut it enough out into the room so I knew I'd be able to bend it up into the shutter. So I turned a fan to blow under there and then a fan to, well first I had the fan, I'm sorry, first I had the fan blowing on the main side, the main floor on either side. I had two fans in there and once the main side dried I turned it to dry under that rug but I had it up airing a bit. And so now the floor is all dry down there. We are supposed to get rain today so I told her, I said well let's let it rain and see because we've had about almost two full days now. It did rain on Thursday morning. Um, so it's been Friday. So yeah, we've had about 48 hours of dry and it was actually very in the 80s and sunny. 
I just don't know how much ground saturation is left. It's not really something you can gauge. You know, I'd need something really long to stick down in the soil and see when I hit dry soil, but I wouldn't know how to do that. So anyway, I said, I think it's best to let it rain another time because, you know, to see. But I do want that carpet and stuff out. So pretty much everything downstairs is up and a mess. Well, it's very organized, I'll be honest. Um, but it's all, I mean, compared to what it's supposed to look like. Um, so I also yesterday went through all of the my baby clothes. You know, I very rarely change my babies. They have so much. So what I did was... I'll show you here because I'm going to try it. I don't know if I'll get to it today. Oh, my 40 minutes. I don't know if I'll get to it today or not. I have these baby clothes. I'm going to have a little bit of a sale. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do it on, probably here on YouTube. Um, well, not probably. I am going to do it here on YouTube um, because I I don't have the, the time to be posting individually like, you know, like people do on Instagram and stuff and have individual prices. So when I was at the post office yesterday, I picked up some medium and some large flat rate boxes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to compile based on, I don't know, even know if I have enough boy stuff to go in, in a box. Um, but I will compile some boxes based on clothing sizes and I will show what's in each box and I'll just have a price for the whole box and I'll explain all that in that video. I, I, that'll probably be sometime next week. Um, if I can get to it tomorrow, that'd be great, but we'll see. Um, so that's there. And then let me move my tripod and show you what my li current living room situation is. So those are, luckily I had saved, um, what are these things called? Garment boxes when we moved. Um, so those three garbage bags on top are um, Princess Adelaide, Levi, and Lucy Ray's going home stuff. And then inside of those are my photo props. Um, I did have to cut, you know, the uh, if, again, if you watch the nursery to the tour of downstairs, the three, um, the, the garment th hanging things that I keep going, baby going home items in. Um, I did have to cut the bottom off of one of them because it did get a little bit of wet when we were moving it. And so I cut the bottom off of that one. And, um, so, but those are in there, down in there. And then all my hanging photo prop fabrics are there, like the big fur and all that stuff. I'm doing this because I don't want to show like family photos and stuff. And then here's another one. And this is all my kits. And then I do have box packing supplies there. You see bubble wrap, my liner, some boxes and stuff because um, Lucy Ray and Adelaide will probably be going home um, before downstairs is finished. So I'll have to be doing box packings up here, probably on my kitchen table. Um, adaptation is key to life, ladies. And then in the guest room, I did bring up one garment rack and I brought all the hanging clothes out of the closet in the nursery. They're up here. So the babies are on the bed. I've got my ironing board up here in the guest room. Again, everything's very organized because that I, I can't have it disorganized. Um, I did think about putting the garment rack here in front of the, the plant table, but I, that would have done my brain in. So it did go, it did, I did rearrange things in the guest room to make it, again, keeping a path to things. And, and that's what I did downstairs. There's a clear path down the middle of the room. I made made sure all light switches were accessible, all outlets are accessible, our our breaker box is accessible. So, you know, there was a lot of mindfulness that went into it. So, um it's been a busy, busy few days. I I I I'll be honest, I'm exhausted. Um, but overall I'm doing great. Um in the evening, you know, my knees and my back have been a bit sore, but um I've been putting salve on and my husband's rubbed my back. So, you know, I, I get up and I'm feeling okay. So thank the Lord for that. So today is Saturday. It is, it is, let's see, just afternoon right now, 12.05. And um, I'm going to do a little bit of housework. Because I was also doing housework on those days and laundry. I, I, I have to do those things. So um, I've got a little housework today to do today. Um for anybody who has corresponded with me through emails or messages, um, I will eventually get to all of them. And um, let's see, what else did I want to say? I talked about my hand. I updated about downstairs. Oh, so um, for anybody who's on a kit list, um, and I did again contact, oh, bless your sweetheart. I don't want to say your name, but you know who you are, the person who's on 
the kit list for one of the babies I'm working on right now. She's been so patient and so kind. Um, my painting is once again on hold. So I don't know if this is maybe to allow my hand a bit more time to heal. It, it, see, it's, it's swelling a bit again um, because of everything I've been doing. And I, I did actually... I did actually bang it yesterday, um, and that um, brought a few stars to my eyes, I'll be honest. Um, so I don't know if this is this happened. You know, I believe everything happens, and there's a lesson in it. I don't know if the lesson is for me, my husband, my landlords. I'm not sure, but I'm guessing God just wants me to rest my hand a little bit more. I wish he just would have said, don't paint right now, but this is what happened. So, um, yesterday I did, I did, I thought, well, you know what, while I'm down here organizing, I can actually watch and catch up on a bunch of videos, but I tried a couple and with all the fans blowing and the dehumidifiers down there, I could barely hear the couple I tried. So I just put praise and worship music on and I'll be, oh no. Yeah. So yesterday when I went down and the concrete was all dry in the main area, oh, did my hands go up in the air and I danced and praised the Lord. I was so grateful and thankful. Oh. So the, the f handful of people that have been with me through this, family and friends who knew about this, who've been supporting me in prayer, I greatly appreciate it. Uh, for anybody who didn't know, who didn't know to pray, I didn't have the time to message a whole bunch of people. Uh, the people who knew are people I actually talk to, not just talk, communicate with typing. I missed a couple days on Facebook I got on last night, and I had so many messages, and I had... I was so overwhelmed because so many of my friends, their children are, are graduating right now. So there's like all these pictures and stuff to catch up on. And I thought, oh my word, I just, I just can't. So it's like Instagram. I bear, I haven't been on Instagram in ages. And when I go back, I feel like I start scrolling and I get like so overwhelmed because there's so much that I've missed that I just have to pick up where I left off. And so um, like last night when I sat down and looked at my email, I hadn't looked at it all day. There were so, I forget the number, but there were a lot of emails. And so, you know, I just, I've had, you know, of course we all, we prioritize. And right now my main concern was saving my business as much of it as possible. So, um, so Tuesday evening it happened. I saved the, the few layaway babies. Wednesday I brought up all the babies. My ki All of this stuff you see in this living room was all brought up Wednesday. Um, anything that was fabric. My kits are all individually wrapped. Each piece is in tissue paper and plastic bags except that brown bag you see in front. is I ha the, the kits that I had set up down there are in just, I just put in a bag because... I didn't have time to wrap all their limbs and stuff. So, but m my other kits on my storage shelf, they're all wrapped in tissue and everything. And the plastic bags they're in are very, very thick plastic, but still I did not want, and it doesn't smell down there. It's not mildewy. It's not moldy or anything, but I just didn't want to take the chance of possibly any moisture getting on the tissue or anything like that. So they, those were all my biggest concerns. And then next was the, the wood and all that. Because everything in reality is replaceable. It's all just stuff. I felt a great responsibility to the babies that you lovely ladies trust me with while they're on layaway. Of course, those were the first thing I saved. And when we lived in Texas and had a shelter, my husband knew. If, if the tornado alarm sounds, he always knew which babies were on layaway. That's what we saved first. So anyway... Um, but that is the update from here. So again, patience for anybody waiting for a Kimberly's Cocoon baby. This is so why I don't take customs because life is always first. And while I have a person who's currently has a baby who they're getting works in progress for, I am so grateful who it is. And there are many people I think who would be gracious, but there are some people, as any of you artists know, some people are not gracious waiting for their babies. And life does happen, and I'm not an excuse maker, but there's nothing I can do right now. There was no way to prevent this. There's nothing I can do. And there are so many reasons why artists stop. They have issues with their children. Somebody dies in their family. They might be sick themselves. And I just think it's a matter of everybody extending grace to everybody the same way you would want grace extended to you. And I think for the most part, again, go watch Suzanne's video. I really think most of the people in the community are very kind and patient and gracious. Um, so I don't want to say that people are not, but I do feel very blessed for the person who this is because she has been more than beyond gracious. And um, I am very grateful and thankful for that. So 
Let me think. I think that's all because I'm already at like almost 50 minutes. But thank you, thank you, thank you for stopping by. And remember, every single day, find at least one thing to be joyful about. And me, myself, I'm joyful that there was no damage to my husband and I. At the end of the day, it's all about people, not stuff. Stuff can always be replaced. And if any of that stuff that I turned upside down yesterday ends up being warped, it's okay. It, it's stuff. Um, it, it is at, at a cost to us because we are renters and renters insurance. I did call the insurance company to find out if there was any damage, could we claim it? And because it's the, it's seepage, it is a structural issue. So we would have to put it through our landlord's homeowner's insurance. And she contacted her homeowner's insurance company and they told her that that is not covered because it is, it's, if it were sewage water, it would have been covered, but because it's seepage from saturation, it's not. So, um, if anything is lost, we can't claim it in insurance. And that's okay. It is what it is. That that's, you know, it's it's an act of God, as they say. Um, if I think if I remember to, because I gotta remember to attach Suzanne's video. I did I was downtown both um Thursday and Friday, and the I, I live near the Mississippi River and it has risen over the banks. And I snapped some photos of both days, and actually on Friday it was worse than on Thursday. It came up further. Um, I sat there yesterday in this one parking lot waiting because I heard a train whistle and um, you could barely see the train tracks, but it did drive through. But if it if it rains enough more and it raises another probably four or five inches, the trains and it's like the coal trains that go through, they won't be able to pass. But looking out in the river, you can't see the where the where the normal bank is and the trees. There's no trunks. It looks like floating it looks like bushes sitting on water and there is a um like the the tr the train station the Amtrak train station down there currently is sandbagged around the building the sandbags look like they had another 3 or 4 that height high above the water and then there is a i'm not sure what it is it looks like some kind of mill like a silo not a silo yeah i think it's a what is it i don't know some kind of thing out there um, and there's a crane and all this stuff all submerged in water. So the, the banks of the Mississippi have flooded over. We are high enough up. Like when I drive, drive down there, I go downhill. Um, so we're up enough that that should not affect us. It would have to raise an awful lot to get up here. But this is just purely from so much rain over the last month and the ground is so saturated, it has nowhere to go. So, um, anyway... But thank you very much, everybody. If you listen to this whole thing, I really, really appreciate it. I would appreciate any prayers that you want to, you know, put out there. So, I, you know, for our landlord to make the right decision and how to how to handle downstairs, um, because until it's it's redone, I'm out of business. And you know, I could potentially paint up here, but I, you know. I like everything in its place, and I would have to put my paints away every day. And I know that sounds like I'm being lazy, but I'm not. My, my brain just works that way. And if I set everything up on my kitchen table, I can't be looking at that all night. And I, that's what I love about my work being downstairs. It's in a different room. When I finish for the day, I can cover over my paints and come back the next day and just pick up where I left off. And so that's how I work. And bringing it up here, I just... You know, I liked being on a tile floor. I, anyway, so right now Kimberly's Cocoon is on hold. And um, I have a lot of other projects to keep myself busy. Mainly, you know, right now, well, again, I'm in a holding pattern until they do something. But I am going to organize these baby clothes. So keep an eye out for that. Um, that should be coming up, I'll say sometime in the next week. I, I don't know what day, but do keep an eye out for that if you're interested in baby clothes. They are baby clothes that were my baby's clothes. They're not baby clothes that go... Anyway, I'll explain all that in the sale video because now I'm at 54 minutes. So Suzanne and I have that in common. We keep trying to say goodbye and we keep talking. <laughs> anyway, ladies, have a very, very blessed day. And, and again, congratulations to all the new babies out there. I've seen a few and um, just keep enjoying your babies and loving life. And remember, find joy each and every day. At least one thing to be joyful about but do try to find as many as possible. Lucy Ray sends her mommy some love. 
Mm. And all the other babies are having a slumber party in the guest room. <laughs> all right, everybody. Thank you for stopping by. Have a very blessed day. Bye-bye. Thank you.